Welcome viewers, it is still the special Democracy Day program here on your favorite TV station, Trust TV. Of course, you know that we will always bring you such special program and of course an opportunity to be a part of the program. My name is Hamza Idris. Happy Democracy Day, Nigerians. <laughs> Yes, in the studio with me this morning to discuss Nigeria's democratic evolution are Mukhtar Modibo, Secretary General, Follow the Money Africa, and Mukhtar Suleiman, a public comment. And they are young, vibrant Nigerians. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having yeah. me. We Thank hope you so much for having me. You are also celebrating Democracy Day. Well, Mukhtar, well, let me start with you. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a normal thing to celebrate uh, because democracy is a government of the people, by the people, for the people, okay. through the people. I'll stop there. And then you, democracy? <laughs> We're doing our best, as much as we can, as fractured as our democracy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes. Um, but before the conversation begins, here is a conversation starter. Yes. Nigeria, Africa's most populous nation and largest democracy, is a rich tapestry of political history. Since the return to democracy in 1999, the nation has witnessed the rise and fall of various political parties, each leaving a distinct mark on the electoral landscape. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, was the dominant force in Nigeria's politics for the first 16 years of the Fourth Republic. In 1999, the PDP's candidate, Olusegu Obasanjo, won the presidential election with significant national support, especially in the southwest and north central zones. Four years later, in 2003, Obasanjo was re-elected, defeating Muhammad Buhari of the All Nigeria People's Party, ANPP. In 2007, Umaru Musa Eradua, also of the PDP, won the presidency, but his tenure was cut short by illness and subsequent deaths in 2010. His vice president, Goodluck Jonathan, assumed office. In the 2011 presidential poll, Goodluck Jonathan won the presidency, securing votes across the Deep South and Southeast regions, but faced significant opposition in the North. By 2015, the PDP faced a significant defeat as Muhammad Buhari of the All Progressives Congress, APC, won the presidency, making it the first time an incumbent president lost a re-election bid. In 2019, the PDP's candidate, Atiku Abubakar, a former vice president, was defeated by Buhari. The PDP maintained a stronghold in the southeast and deep south regions, but could not secure enough support nationally. In 2023, Atiku Abubakar ran again, but was unsuccessful. The PDP continued to show significant strength in certain regions, but struggled to regain its former national dominance. The All Progressives Congress was formed in 2013 through a merger of four opposition parties, the Action Congress of Nigeria, ACN, the Congress for Progressive Change, CPC, the All Nigeria People's Party, ANPP, and a faction of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA. In 2015, Muhammad Buhari became the first APC president, weaning widespread support, particularly in the North and Southwest. The victory ended the PDP's 16-year rule. After a somewhat tumultuous first term in office, Bahari was re-elected, maintaining strongholds in the northwest, northeast and southwest regions. In 2023, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, a former governor of Lagos and a key APC figure, won the presidency. His campaign capitalized on APC's established strongholds and made inroads in regions previously dominated by the PDP. Before merging into the APC, the ACN played a significant role in the Southwest. In 2007, the ACN's presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, 
performed relatively well in the Southwest, but did not win the presidency. The ENPP was a major opposition party before merging into the APC. Between 2003 and 2007, Muhammad Buhari ran under the ANPP banner, securing significant votes in the north but losing to the PDP candidates. In the later years, parties like the SDP and LP began, grain, began gaining traction, particularly in localised regions. In 2023, the Labour Party's candidate, Peter Obi, garnered substantial support, particularly among young voters and in the southeast, highlighting a shift towards newer political movements. From 1999 to 2023, Nigerian politics has been characterized by the rise and fall of major political parties. With the PDP and APC dominating the landscape, each election cycle brought new dynamics reflecting the evolving political preferences of the Nigerian populace. As the nation continues its democratic journey, the impact of these parties and their candidates will shape the future of Nigeria's political landscape. All viewers, that was a special report on Nigeria's democratic evolution over the years. While we chew some of the things you've seen uh, here in the studio, you will have the opportunity to also contribute as the program unfolds when we open the telephone line. Mukhtar and Mukhtar, once again, welcome and <laughs> happy democracy. Let me start with the first Mukhtar on the, on the right-hand side. The Nigeria's democratic journey, has anything changed? Um, so, a lot of things has changed. And I'll tell you what have changed. Okay. The first change is um, we used to have General Buhari, and now we have Muhammadu Buhari, right? We used to have uh, President Tinibu. We used to have Governor Tinibu. We now have President Tinibu, right? We used to have um, a governor, but now we have sometimes senators. There are senators and what have you. The reality is, is worthy of celebration. The numbers, uninterrupted democracy for 25 years. But the reality is, what is the reflection of that particular democracy on the other side of the scale? Now, if the people in government, people we send to represent us, are celebrating it, what do we celebrate, right? As Nigerians. As Nigerians, because I, I, I'll give you the latest conversation we're having is around the minimum wage, right? Yes. Calculate 10 years backward, 10 years ago. How much is a dollar? How much was it? Um, um, I can't really project yes. how much a dollar was, but it's not as 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 what is it what is it is today, mm. right? So if I am doing some level of maybe offhead calculation, yes. if someone is earning one hundred and fifty dollars ten years ago in twenty ten or in 20, 2009 or so, mm. today that person is earning forty dollars, right? Forty dollars is we're talking about that sixty, um, um, the sixty thousand that have uh, been deliberated by the federal government is saying this is what we'll pay, and this is because I mean dollar is at a thousand four hundred and 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 something. Obviously, you are earning forty. So, are you saying maybe the clamor by by labor for whatever figure mm. is like they are clamoring for what ordinarily civil yes. servants were receiving? Yes. 10, yes, 15 yes, years ago. Yes, but because of inflation, that's why we're seeing that. So what I'm trying to say is there are a lot of things that has changed. We have entered into a lot of things from um, double recession to inflation to, to, to other things, issues of insecurity before. We don't trade people, but you and I will sit down here and hear conversation around insecurity, kidnapping, and even a, an armed group will buy... Uh, the, a group will kidnap, another group will buy, another group will call the family. Slavery. To, to, I mean, obviously, that's what we're doing. So the reality is we've got insecurity, we've got inflation, we've got recession, um, and we've got that point of discrimination. Whether we like it or not, the level of division because of political ideology and political um, 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 conversation in this country is, is, is very huge. And, you know, democracy could have brought um, some level of ideology. 
you join one political party because your ideas align with their political party. You join the other political party because your ideas align. But today, we don't have that ideology because people jump from party A to party B at a time when, oh, I lost uh, the primaries, I moved to this, or oh, I was Because the ultimate, here. the ultimate goal is to grab power. It, it's to grab power. Okay, let and, me bring and, and the, the Sakom Mokhtar yeah. in on the, on, on the right-hand side. So to have your take, um, democratic evolution. You have seen the you know, um, theme played uh, earlier from 1966, where you have the, you know, Awolowo's political party, Azikiwe's political party, Sardauna's political party. People believe that they were regional parties. So if you look at it from that, you can say that there is positive transition when you now um, have uh, political parties with national appeal. But why are those political parties with national appeal are not really connected with the people? I think it's the first thing we have to actually put into place is to also realize that the realities of how our democracy was birthed, even since our independence, was not for national unity. We had three regions in the country that just wanted to chase away the white people, and they just band together. They felt like doing it together would be stronger, and then they chased them away. And then you can actually still see the same thing playing out all the way down. It is why regional governance is still a big thing, where you see that one party is predominantly from one region, and another party is predominantly from another region. So there's ethnicity rubbing off on almost every single thing that we do, and little to no ideology of any kind from the political side of our democracy. The political democracy that we are running today is is baseless, to say the least. It has no form of ideology, like um, Mukhtar. Mukhtar has actually said. Yes. <laughs> like Mukhtar has actually said, has no ideology. There is no stand. We have no standing as a, as a country. We just, we just see it as an access to grab power. Most of us are just political career. We just pursue political careers without no professionalism. We are looking at things significantly from our own personal interest. Just a few days ago, a few days ago, I was having a conversation with some friends, and they were telling me with evidence, actually, although I'm not going to name names, yes. they were telling me with, some, with evidence, they were showing me conversations and whatnot that happened between them and one of the senators, and they, they were trying to revive one of our major economic... Um, I'm trying not to be specific in terms mm. of locations and all of that. Okay. But the point I was trying to make is, the point I'm trying to make is, they went there with investors to this senator, and they were trying to tell the senator, okay, we're going to create jobs we, if we revive this place. Yes. If we do this here, we're going to create a lot of jobs. And we're going to ensure that your constituents get the largest share if you can facilitate us um, getting approval to invest in this thing. And the senator said that is not a, none of his problem. Are you, well, giving him what two, is are you giving him two million US dollars? His own. You, yes, this was last year. This was even just last year. And it's because I have lost my seat. I'm in the court. I need money. We just came out of elections. So if you can give me two million US dollars, we'll see how we can facilitate what you Not do. about uh, providing it jobs. It has nothing to do with that. And I think that has been the reality of our democracy since 1999, in fact. Since 1999. And it's sad and appalling because after President uh, Obasanjo left office, we got to start hearing things about some of the um, issue, um, uh, corruption that went on under his tenure, even from uh, the vice president at the time, for, under Obasanjo's watch, uh, my watch book and my command and all of that. We saw a lot of this. We've seen a lot of discrepancies and it has deteriorated significantly even more in the last 10 years. In the last eight years of the last administration, it has to be one of the worst that any country in this region could have actually faced, especially for a country that is as large as a large economy like ours. The economy of Lagos alone is placed to be okay. about the economic size of about five or six different African countries. But this and is by yet, your assessment, right? Yeah, and yet this is oh, the yeah. reality that we are actually facing ourselves. We are not seeing the dividends of this democracy that we that we so much as endured, mm. not enjoyed has not trickled down to the common Nigerians. And Mukhtar also attempted to mention something like that. Of course, you say that there is cause for celebration, but by who? I, I see it as, um, you know, a hypothetical question. Yes, and uh, uh, we're talking about uh, celebration, and uh, the president has arrived at the Eagle Square a moment ago. You can see, you, you can see aura of um, celebration there. Um, does the president ha has any reason to not to celebrate? Let me put it. Uh, he, he has no reason not to celebrate. So he should celebrate? He should. 
Because, I mean, this is 25 years of interrupted democracy. But the, the thing is, uninterrupted democracy. Yes. But the thing is, for us, mm -hmm. what are we celebrating, right? What are we celebrating? Because, I mean, I tell you, as it stands now, I've, I, I, I went for a training last week in Sokoto, and I was meant to um, understand that there are some local government education authority um, staffs that are being paid as less as 15,000 naira. 18,000 naira, maybe some, some people 12,000 naira as salary. Even yesterday we discussed this. Uh, you know, the, so, the, so, so, that, so if you tell the person in Sabon Birni or in Isa or in Magu to come out and celebrate democracy like the president is celebrating, I mean, what are you telling him to do? Obviously, the president has every right to celebrate. He was a senator during a democratic time. He was a governor right? during a democratic time. He is now the president during a democratic time. So he has everything to celebrate. And I mean, there has not been any, any point not to celebrate for him. But if you ask me, as someone that is not in government, I will question why I'm celebrating it. I love Nigeria. Nigeria is my own before any other thing, right? But the thing is, what will I say democracy has brought you know, to me, for me to say, okay, this is something I will hold and celebrate very close to me. And that's the question, the, 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 the question now. Our education sector has a problem. Our healthcare sector, almost half of us run that um, out-of-pocket expense of health when there is health um, insurance scheme. We brought a lot of ideas, but strategy to run those ideas. On health, there is basic healthcare provision phone that is uh, looking at having Every political ward has have a primary health care and enjoy um, 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 health, mm. health, uh, health benefit. But no, we still go out of pocket. No matter how rich you are in this country, let one of your family member get sick, you'll become poor. And that's the reality. Now, if you go to um, our aviation sector, flights are being cancelled day by day. Go to the power sector. I mean, you, you, you just sit down. We die in Abuja if they take light. You can go on Twitter and drag um, AEDC or, or, or what have you. But the person that is in Maru or in Besu or in Dukzu, what do you expect him to do, right? There are communities that have not seen light for decades, right? And those communities might have primary health care, might have primary schools that cannot access that. There are, com there are communities that are not farming completely because of insecurity, because they will be kidnapped or um, um, something will happen. So... There are a lot of things that there are people that if you tap them, maybe someone has not eaten in the morning, or if he has, he or she has eaten, the next meal is something he has to look for and tell him you want to celebrate democracy. What will, what will he say about the democracy? And that's the reality. Are you on the same page with Mukhtar? Oh, yes. I th actually, there's something I've always said on this program, which is it is good governance and good politics. Uh, sorry, it is good politics and good policies that brings about good governance. For us to actually enjoy democracy as it should be on paper, we need our political class or our leadership needs to ensure that they can merge politics and policies together for us to be able to enjoy the dividends of those democracy. Now, Policy angle in this country as, and politics have always um, existed in parallels and not together. Now, you, if you look at the uh, Tinibu administration, there have been some good policies that have come out. A typical one would be the Electricity Sector Power Reform Act, which was, which was started under President um, Muhammad Buhari. I know vividly how much I understand some tenets of that document. But one of the key things there is for states to begin to generate its own power. I was in Abia State some weeks ago, and... To my amazement, even despite the, the strike that ensued that period by labor, there was still steady, almost steady power in the state because of the Aba power plant. The state is generating its own power. There's almost steady power in almost everywhere, not everywhere, of course, but almost everywhere, of which they are even f funneling some to Oweri, which is a uh, neighboring state of, 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 of Abia state. So I think most of these things are things that we need to look wider into. We need to see, we need to find newer ways to ensure that the things that are supposed to benefit the common Nigerians are, the common Nigerians are getting access to them. That way it is easier for us to say there's something that we're looking forward to to celebrate as a country. There's, whenever the um, leaders at the top are celebrating something, we also feel it and we also say, oh yes, this is actually something we recognize because we've seen it, it has lived with us, but that's not usually the case in this country. So there's this huge divide between the ruling class and uh, common, the common the citizens. Yeah. The, yeah, because it seems as if when you enter that um, villa, 
there's a diff- you go into a whole different um, universe and you lose touch of reality. And we need to find a way to ensure that we can bring the leadership closer to the people so that the, the leadership can understand keenly. I understand the conversation around minimum wage to some extent, to some extent. Yes. But for me, personally, I've always said we need to look at things in terms of sustainability as opposed to the other way around. But then you have to look at the realities of the people you are, you are dealing with. Okay, if you're for, thinking for about me, sustainability, not to, not to court you. Mm. Now, civil servants, they are asking for 250000 50000 But then... Uh, I have a table here. I don't want to cut everything. But while, uh, you know, African countries, Seychelles, you know, their minimum wage is 461. Mm-hmm. Mauritius, 321. Um, Morocco, 232. When you come and check Nigeria, it is giving you 20. And, uh, of course, there are some countries below Nigeria, like Gambia, Ethiopia, Sudan, Rwanda, and Burundi. But even Sao Tome, 110. But conversely, in dollars? it's in dollars, yes. So we're battling 20.2 yes, dollars. Yes, exactly. Nigeria is battling 20.2, while Seychelles there, they have 461, Mauritius 325, you, you, and all that. What, what I'm trying to ask, mm. um, uh, Mukhtar, the, the debate, governors are saying it's not sustainable and all that. But if you check what do governors take, what our legislators take, and all that, vis-a-vis what they are are making for civil servants. You you, you see that there is a clear disconnect. It's that we are not being sincere in the conversation. Yes, I I agree with that, but then we also need to look at it. Now, I have an unpopular... Now, this is not to make a case for the government itself. I'm also going to ask somebody who is also partially an employer, because I have domestic staff in my house. Mm. So we also have to look at the realities of me. How much am I earning? I work in the private sector. How much am I earning as a person? So if minimum wage goes up to 250,000 naira, like the labor is requesting for, that means I have to pay my gate man 250,000 naira. I have to pay my house helps, the ones who clean my house, 250,000 naira. But depending on your level, meaning most likely your employer will now pay you like 2 million. Yeah, depending on my level. Now, even if, let's assume, let's assume for the sake of your argument that I'm receiving 2 million naira, if I'm paying 500,000 naira out of 2 million naira, every month already to just two um, of my employees. And this is just me who is just employing two people. And you know that if if they are not up to 50 in your employee, you you are not actually compelled to... To follow the minimum wage. Oh, that's that's news. That's something new to me. I I, I didn't know that. (laughs) I must actually admit. But even at that, let's even look at um, small businesses who employ up to 50. You also have to look at the current cost for diesel the current running cost of that business and the profit that is coming in overall, how uh, increment in salary is going to affect the recurrent expenditure. I think, I think, raising up the minimum wage of 250000 naira is just going to lead to more unemployment because most companies may have to let go of staff. But on the flip side, this is the flip side now, I, I'm not saying that the government should not do anything. I'm not saying 62000 naira is a fair amount. It, I don't think it is. Absol- it's an aberration, actually. But what I, what I, what I, what I hope would happen at the end of this conversation is if labor should agree to take something lower than what they are what they are requesting for currently then we should also part of the agreement should be systems and structures should be in place to ensure that i have value for my currency when i have my money at hand if we can if we can ensure a steady and stable intra intercity transport network you know in abuja we enjoy a lot of things honestly there, the, as much as Abuja has most of its problems, there's so many things. You go to the interlands, you go to other states, mm. the subnationals, and you see how deplorable People roads are. are. In here. Yeah, honestly, it is it is frustrating. There's so many good things happening here in Abuja, as 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 annoying as it as, as it seems. So, if we can ensure steady or proper intra and intercity transport network, so that I don't need necessarily need to buy fuel at the premium price for me to be able to access or access the, the, the areas where I go to work or where my children go to school and etc. If they can be stable power, so I don't have to buy fuel for my generator as well. Mm. No basic amenities that ensures that the free trade area is operating at its maximum. But at this point where we are in, you cannot remove all of the benefits and of what Nigerians are supposed to, to enjoy. Then you are asking us to pay more tax. 
you are then not increasing the minimum wage. I think this is where there is a lot of problem, but I don't think more money in the hands of Nigerians will be the solution to the problem because that will lead to more inflation. If there's more buying power, if there's more purchasing power, there will be incre uh, that's basic economics. But even at that, even at that, I still think that the labor union should not just demand for money. I'm, I'm hoping that this is a negotiation tactic that they can use to say, okay, we can collect this amount, but then we want this, 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 this before we accept the amount. Okay. Put this, this, this in place, then we can accept this amount. Okay. And hopefully that, that, that might happen. Mokta, we are talking about Nigeria's democratic journey. Some people, I received quite a number of calls that um, deliberately government has succeeded in disconnecting Nigerians from even understanding what democracy is and when we should celebrate or when not to celebrate. For instance, May 29, right? Mm -hmm. Many Nigerians expected speech from the president rolling out of achievements and all that. That did not happen. They didn't roll out. Of course, ministers held conferences and all that at Radio House. But for the president, no. Now, uh, Nigerians differ their expectation to Democracy Day, which is June 12. But today, if you look at the speech of the president, it's about history. Yes. It's about history, not about what has been achieved. Are leaders really fair to Nigerians? While coming, I'm sure you passed through the, the, the streets and I didn't see anybody celebrating. At the um, traffic light here, you know, some young people selling watches, they, they, they wanted me to buy. I said, no, happy democracy. Then he said, <laughs> happy suffocation or oh, suffocacy. You know, he, <laughs> he coined this. Meaning that he, he wasn't really happy, he, he is disconnected. Now, the variation, is it really okay, June 12, May 29? Because Nigerians are finding it difficult to even know when to ask questions as to what they should expect in any of these two days. So, you know, for me, celebrating democracy is not about a day, right? Mm. Whether June 12 or May 29, you are just there to serve people. Do you have a blueprint of serving people? Do you have a clear strategy? when to serve people, how to serve the people, how will people perceive what you're serving them, and how will those people comprehend those things you're serving them is another thing. So what we're saying, I will go with what he said around um, marrying policy and politics together. Mm, to, right? To have good governance. To have good governance. You know, there is nothing called governance and good governance. Every governance should is meant to be good. Everything governance should be good. But what we're seeing is not what is there, right? So what we're saying is, if we roll out to say a certain country in this continent, in this part of Africa, is taking around $400 when yeah. we are still battling with $20.02. Yeah, it's issues, of course, the table you I get. have here. Yeah, and there are, some, yeah. there are some people that are not close to that, close to that $20, right? What are we saying? And a state governor is coming out to say we can pay $70,000. That is Edo State. Yes. Based on their uh, uh, COVID. There are some states that um, the Zamfara state governor just um, announced, uh, I think, day before yesterday or so, saying they made a backlog of six months and it's now they started implementing the 30, policy of 30000 now. For them to go up again... Which is outlawed in, you know, in the eye of law, right? Thank you. Which is a problem. So what we're saying is, if you see someone not celebrating it, I will tell you one of the one, uh, things that have been... You know, Nigeria is a country of breaking news every day. One of the things is, I don't think sitting down here, I have seen a law that got passed as quick as that change of um, national... A national why, and, why, why do you think it happened <laughs> that way? So... I still caution myself to say we went ahead to change our national anthem with their own reason. I don't know what that reason might be. But we did not put a strategy on how to communicate the national anthem to the people. I tell you, if you, if you want to make me remove this mic and go home, it's ask me to sing the national anthem because I don't know it. Right? I don't know it. I asked my father. My father said... He was in primary two when the national anthem 
got uh, stopped. And he don't even know how to sing it. The only thing, if my father only know the national anthem I know, right, then there should be a clear strategy of implementing that particular national language. But some people are, you know, are saying it was even a distraction because they unveiled it on May 29th yeah, so, because there was nothing to so, now engage Nigerians so if, with. if those people say that, you get, it's, it's, they have every right to say it because ideally what we have been seeing during previous administration, during Yaradua, during Goodluck, during Obasanjo, all these things are things that they come and roll out to say, oh, the government have done this and this and this and this. Have, they have achieved this and this. Even if it is two things. And tell us that this is what you have learned. Right? So that can we have, can we have our presidents or our governance, governance structures coming to give a learning report? So that if some people come, will not come with another same thing. Because most of the times, we want to see sustainability and stability in governance. Mm. But what we see on the first two years of governance is we are trying to address this, we are trying to address this. Look at what is happening in Kaduna. Look at what is happening in Kano. Look at what is happening in Rivers, right? All these states deserve good governance. But what their governors are doing, particularly while they are doing the work, they are also battling to address some issues of political class that that it does not even go in line with, with the context. So, if I come back to your question, the issue is, as someone that doesn't work in government, yes. work in, 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 in the civil society, and then work with community, work with people, I will tell you, I don't know what to tell people to celebrate. Or, I don't know what to encourage people to say, celebrate our democracy, because the democracy, I know of someone that we had a conversation yesterday, and he told me, the only road to his village was built by the military. So if the military are coming back, he will be happy. I say, ah, no, 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 now, hmm. no, now. He now said, come, come down and let me explain. He said the only road and the only bridge that lead to his village today is still that of the military. So as far as he's concerned, concerned the military, they are his saviors. Um, Mukhtar, yes, of course, you can see parade and the... Um, Eagle Square, um, diplomatic call, quite a number of um, senior citizens all uh, marking the um, democratic um, evolution in Nigeria. Yes, Mukhtar, I want to quote point number 26 from uh, President uh, Tinubu's Democracy Day speech, speech, and then I will ask you the question. Yeah, he said, as Nigerians, we must remind ourselves that no matter how complicated democracy may be, it is the best form of governance in the long run. We must also be aware that there are those among us who try to exploit current challenges to undermine, if not destroy, this democracy, for which so much has already been given. Now the question is, was there anything tangible given to, to Nigerians? In the newsroom yesterday, of course, one of our editors at large, Dr. Tasu, he, he came. We held our meeting uh, with him. But um, I was devastated because he came from the UK. And um, he told us that this issue of subsidy removal and all that remains the major problem. That unless it is addressed, no Jupiter, no economic policy will reverse the problems Nigerians are going through. And he said in the UK there is almost nothing that is not directly or indirectly subsidized. subsidized. And uh, I'm going back to um, the point you raised earlier, that government must put structures on ground so that Nigerians will, still, will, will begin to have the impact of uh, good governance, transportation, education, health, and all that. But it's like our, our, our leaders, they don't want us to know that this subsidy is not actually an evil thing. It, 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 isn't. it, is, it isn't, because even if you look at the UK that you've made as an example, you just, um, you, the, your colleague actually spoke of, in the UK, I think UK currently is one of the countries that have universal health coverage. Mm -hmm. my, my, my cousin lives in the UK, he underwent a, a hip, surgery replacement, re replacement surgery, and, and he did free. not pay a single, in fact, they paid his wife to be his health care giver for six months. They paid, I, I don't understand, what? They paid his wife 
to be his healthcare giver. They so, paid his wife. Yes, to be a support to do to because the wife had to leave her job. Is so he a minister paid, there? No, it's, he's not even a citizen. He's just a resident. He's a medical doctor there, but he's just a resident. He's just somebody who migrated from Nigeria to the UK. The point I'm trying to make is that these are economies that work. Yes, the the the, the British system has one of the most brutal fiscal policies. We know that 40% of your, of your pay is going back to the government. But you are seeing it. You are seeing it work for you. Transport is not a problem. You are never late if, to Of course, he told me that, uh, he told us that you know, one of his colleagues also even asked him to come and pick one of his cars. He said, he doesn't need a car. He doesn't, I, you don't I, need it. You, you mean you don't have car in you the never, yeah. He doesn't need it. He doesn't you, need you, you're never late for anything. You're never late for anything because the bus comes on time. It leaves on time. The there train, are times where the, the metro works. Everything works, operates optimally and the government ensures that there is a lot of money that goes into that thing to maintain its quality our, our train just derailed again from kaduna not to, twice in in a, in a month in less than a month it derailed from the abuja kaduna less train. Than a week. In, in less than a week in fact the the, the train derailed twice and the only functioning the one in the north yeah, honestly the only functioning one in the north and we're looking at the possibility of extending it to kanu and they were looking at how... I, I uh, saw the, um, of course... Yeah, uh, and they, they, they're also the considering... The said about tw first quarter of 2025. And they're looking at the possibility of out. merging the Ibadan-Lagos rail line to come and meet with that so that at least you can travel from Kanu to Lagos freely in the country. And hopefully... I will be hearing this since the time of uh, Obasanjo. No, but we're seeing it materialize. But the problem with issues that materialize now in Nigeria is that there's lack of quality control. There's lack of accountability from and the side of the government culture. here and a very poor maintenance control and terrible consequence management. Because tell me, in a sane society, a train derails twice in a week, somebody should resign. Somebody should resign. Not just even resign, somebody should be made a scapegoat. There should be a scapegoat. Why did this happen when there's an MD of the railway co corporation, there's a minister of, transport of, of transportation in the, in, the, in the country, and a host of other agencies that actually operate to ensure to, uh, that ensures that that's particular sector operates optimally. So some people should resign in a very sane society, but that's not the, we're not in a very sane society in Nigeria. So, and these are some of the issues that you see. So we need to, we need to do better as uh, our leaders need to really do far, far better. You know, there's always that question of who does it come from? Is the chicken and egg conversation around leadership and followers? Do the followers demand accountability and that will force the leaders or do the leaders set up structures that ensures accountability? But I'll say this, the person with the most power has to ensure accessibility and accountability from themselves before people can actually demand for something. And the people with the most power in this system are our political leaders. So they need to actually do way, way much more better than they are doing right now. And we need to ensure so that at least the dividends of democracy can be enjoyed by everybody else. I, I, when I was watching the president's speech, I was watching it live on YouTube earlier this morning, and he said something in one of the lines of his speech where he said, the endurance of our democracy for the past 25 years, and somebody commented and said, yes, thank you for using the word endurance and not enjoying. You, you can't use endurance. the word enjoyment mm. or anything because it, it's, we've really been enduring this particular democracy. Yes, it is a win that for 25 years we have had an uninterrupted um, democracy. Yeah, as a, as a pro-democrat, I actually say yes, that's a huge win for us as a country, especially when there have been pockets of junta uh, all around us, Nigeria has stayed firm and ensured that, okay, we can protect our democracy however fractured it is. But still, we need to transcend beyond the fractures. We need to fix it, mend it, and then move on. Subsidy is not a terrible thing. You cannot remove subsidy from every single thing. Go the, the, the functions of government is to ensure that the lives and properties of the Nigerians are protected, and part of it is to ensure, because that's why we pay tax. Why do we pay the tax? If, you, if, if One of the most absurd things we found, especially in recent times and, and in this particular government, is the need for us to be di taxed directly for almost everything. Why do you have to tax me directly for power when I'm already paying 7.5% in an economy where you're not paying me up to $20, uh, $20 as minimum wage? I shouldn't have to pay direct tax for every single thing. And that is a very, very poor system. I, I, I heard um, Tai Woye Dele saying the other day, some weeks ago on the, um, the TV, on one of your sister TV station, that um, they are considering the possibility of increasing the VAT from 7.5 to... Uh, because if you look at our cumulative tax as a country, yeah. we are paying about 20 something percent. Cumulative. Which is on the high side. Yeah, which is on the high side. When you Going look at our GDP. Yes, when you look at, not just even our GDP. If you look at our GDP, you're looking at the entire economy. If you look at how much each person is earning, Cumulatively, we That's are paying, per capita income. Yeah, per, per capita income. We are, we are, we are spending. Yeah, the, I, I calculated the other day. More than twenty, almost twenty-five percent of my salary is going on tax, 
and statutory deductions. And yet, I am not enjoying anything. Healthcare, I'm, pro I'm providing it for myself. Security, if I need to, I would have to provide it for myself. I have to buy fuel for my generator Education. or diesel for my generator. I have to pay for. I have to pay premium price for schools. It's sickening because you ask yourself one simple question: Why is it that the government schools are paying their teachers more than the pri private schools, and yet people prefer to take their children to private schools? An irony. Um, a, a huge Mr. irony. Thank you very much. Uh, viewers, while we continue to analyze ups and downs of Nigeria's democratic transition, especially in the last 25 years in this Eagle Square, it is actually um, uh, parade by the military and paramilitary uh, establishments in the country. Um, Mukhtar, then it's like um, another problem is agreeing on the um, definition of democracy because it's like it is still a contentious issue in Nigeria. Uh, we are here to take one part. Is it the parliamentary system, the American system, which is the presidential or the combo that we, we have. Some are saying we should have homegrown. And unless you get it right, certainly there is nothing you can build or nothing to expect to get a positive result. Mm. Yeah. So, so, so Malam, the thing is any system we're going, or any system we're doing, it will depend on what is power and control. And it will depend on what is sustainability and stability. And it will depend on what is the perception and comprehension. So it's these three groups, power and control, perception and comprehension, and then um, um, sustainability, um, and sustainability and stability. OK, elucidate. So power and control in the sense that you have power, I have power, and we all have power. And that's why we send you, all of us cannot be there. That's why we send you to represent us. Mm. If you go there One to represent us, thank you. If you go there to represent us, you're not there to just do it for yourself. You're there to serve all of us. So that means we have the power. You are just controlling us. And when we get, we can drop you. But that is not what we're seeing. Now, sustainability and stability in the sense that a lot of things might be right. I will, I will mention names. We used to have people like Ad, uh, Adeshina, um, Olushe Gunaganga in trust and investment, uh, the Adeshina in agriculture, mm. and um, now uh, yes, Africa, uh, Development, Africa Bank. Development Bank. But immediately he left, we, we got Anono, we got um, Outdoor Bay, and, 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 and what have you, right? When Olushe Are you Gunaganga saying the bar has been the best? So, so that's, the, that's the reality. That sustainability is a problem right you might have created i will tell you categorically i did not i am not a supporter of what the apc administration is doing but there is a sector that i can confidently say that the sector has evolved from what it used to be which sector that is the communication ministry of communication and digital economy if you look at what we have been doing around communication and digital economy, you could understand that there is that so, sort of stability within that system. But is it not because we have more than 70% private sector initiatives? Yeah, but, but they are being controlled by the government, right? Private sector initiative, they are in each and every sector, you've got private sector initiatives. And they, initiative. they invested heavily, billions of investment, dollars. Investment have would, would have gone separate way if there is nobody to m show management of that investment, right? We've seen um, um, Pantami move to Bosun Tijani now, and you could see how, how the, 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 the thing has been moving. So what I'm trying to say is, it's not about what system we're playing. It's about... Do, do, do these people really care about us? The caliber of individuals. Yes. So, so leader, that leadership, I always say it whenever I'm here, the leadership is all about that level of integrity, that level of credibility, that level of um, legitimacy, that level of um, trust, that level of belief. You know, We've got Yaradua at some point, when he saw rest in peace, that mm. said, the, the system that brought me, has some issues, yes. and we will work together to address those issues, right? So the, and he was determined. And he was determined. He was the one who brought Uwais? Yes. Yes, the Uwais report, yes. If, if, if you look at what the we are going report. through today, Malam Hamza, let's not go further. Mm. 
Check Kubwa Expressway. Yes. Check the airport route, right? We used to have what is called nine-point agenda. As someone that is in primary school, moving into secondary school, right? I was, you could see that this is the nine-point agenda. This is where he is going. So if you touch this, they will tell you this and this and it's this and this. Time. So they, are, they were strategies, right? I mean, today in Abuja, we are enjoying all these things because one person, one person created that. One of the things we have been knowing while growing up is what is happening in the Niger Delta. It was addressed in how many years? And there are the how many years so in power? Three years. Three years. Three years. Right? So, Mokhtar, maybe you should come in here. At, at what point did we drill in, um, you know, going by our words? Our words being our bond, right? Uh, even Tinubu has his, is it four or seven? Because, uh, we don't even know at this point because it's not properly communicated. Even the, the strategy document is not comprehensive enough. And another thing that we need to also understand about government is that government do not exist in abstraction. In every governance structure, there are state-specific actors that ensures that, that gov those governance structures are either working, functioning, or dysfunctional. And that's, that, that's no different from what we have in Nigeria today. So if we want to actually call issues, we need to call them by their names so that people can know the faces of these issues. I, I'll, I'll, say this, I'll say this unapologetically, without fear, of, without fear of favor. The Minister of Power needs to go because we're having a very terrible time under that. Under we, that we, did, we did a report. Uh, it was an exclusive in the, in the Daily Force. Today. Yeah. We didn't mention names, of course, but um, from credible sources, so, so. we heard that there will be um, cabinet reshuffle. Well, we don't know whether tomorrow or next, time. but certainly there will be It's high time because I know, I know for a fact that after the, um, the ministerial, the ministerial um, screen, uh, not screen, sorry, the, the assessment. I that was done. Yes, yes, yes. I yes, know I have someone who yeah I have someone who works there very closely and they were saying that the president was really not happy with a lot of things that actually a lot of the reports that he actually got. What 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 happened and within the last one year? Yes, he was really he was really really not happy with most of the reports that he got. So actually I don't think that there is I don't think that's far from it. The they Minister of Power will not take it lightly uh, if he's actually watching or something. I don't think he should take it lightly. Again, we voted who appointed him. And so since we voted who appointed him, I have a right to say that he's not serving my interest as a citizen. And I can guarantee you that there are millions of Nigerians who are watching this program as well who are nodding their head and saying, yes, he needs to go. Not but just even him. About there him. are a plethora. No, not just even happening. him. Not just even the him. The power had been there it, even during Obasanjo. I agree. I but see, minister see, said, you uh, see, within one year, right? You see, you see, you see, this is where, this is where we are we're not understanding some of these issues. Okay. The removal of first subsidy, like you've mentioned, mm. is a major problem. And unless it is addressed, I do not think we should bring subsidy back for fuel. Not right now, yes. anyway. As a, as a matter of personal principle, as a matter of personal principle, if you understand the deplorable state of the subsidy regime, you would not want it to come back. I also don't want it to come back. But, but, but I think what, what but, that means is that you don't have the, the structures to ensure that the subsidy is deployed the way I it agree. Should. I agree. Now let me let me make you understand something. The 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 the, the first subsidy remover mm. works in tandem with the functionality of the Ministry of Power. Most of what we use for for. As at last year or two years ago, NNPC came out and said we consume about sixty something million liters per day. I can guarantee you that more than eighty percent of that consumption is on generators. If the Ministry of Power was working optimally mm. to ensure that there is stable power, the, there will be no increase, there will be no hike in manufacturing because the major um, recurrent cost for manufacturing is in power generation. Let me give you a story. Yesterday, I was having a dinner with a friend who produces rice. And he was telling me that they pay somebody in somewhere mm. 20 million naira every month to ensure that they can get 16 hours of power. What? Every day. Every they month. Form of, uh, they are paying it as bribe, yes, to somebody. Because it's cheaper for him to Because get it's cheaper for him to do that than for him to go and be buying diesel every single month. 16 million. Six, 20 million. 20 million. Just for to get 16, 16 hours, hours of life. Every day. Not 24 hours Not, of life. Just to get 16 hours of life. So, my, my, the, so meaning that, assuming there is... No infraction, no cutting corner. Thank you. 
if the, Maybe if the, the cost power, of his production will come it down. It will come significantly. And at paying that six, let me let me even make you let me let me let, let's even break it down. At paying that sixteen million naira, um, twenty million naira every month, he can still comfortably add one one five per bag of rice and still make his profits. Now imagine if he didn't need to pay twenty million naira. Yes. Yes. This is just a loan for power. This is just for power alone to power his machineries. So the point I'm trying to make for you is that maybe the, he has to also induce um, the security. Agencies so that they can. Oh no, it's not in this 20 million. No, not in this 20 million. This 20, 20 million, million is for power. That's, alone. that's what I'm saying. Good. Meaning now, he needs another budget, budget again to, to protect, induce, his, to protect his, his investment. So the point, I'm, and he actually also mentioned that actually. So the point I'm just trying to make is for a country that the government should otherwise provide certain basic amenities, we are paying tax and still funding those basic amenities by ourselves. The country is in shambles. And it's not by coming, in, coming out to give us statements and telling us that you feel our pains. You don't feel our pains. Because if you feel our pains, you won't be... You are now referring you to be Mr. Speaking, President. Yes, I'm, uh, yes, I am speaking to the President. Are you, are you if saying he does that really, he's actually not talking from the bottom of his heart? I don't... I, well, I, I don't know. I can't speak to his heart. And you don't anything. want me to indict you. I, I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I can't speak for his heart. But I think if he, if he really feels the pinch, if he really feels the pinch then he would have put a lot of fires under the seats of these people who he has appointed in different positions to ensure that we can enjoy some of these benefits. We'll still dwell on that. Uh, Mukhtar, this allegation of guesswork by the Tinubu administration that um, most of the policies, it's not that they articulated them and that's why they error. keep reversing. <laughs> I don't want to use that word. <laughs> so, uh, is it they are overwhelmed or they are not really prepared and that did is why really they say overwhelmed <laughs> you know the, the reality is when people talk about something it makes me really it, 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 when you say overwhelmed it touched me do you know that you cannot be a president of nigeria without campaigning for some certain months before you become president or even yes like uh, have you ever looked for, since ha 1992 have you ever looked for something and then you come to it and you say you are overwhelmed no no Okay. Nobody asks you to go there. Maybe he wasn't aware of no, the no, 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 no. <laughs> Before you get there, you should have understand that something that is there that will stop you from working. There is no issue of, of being overwhelmed here. So what I, what, I, what, what I will say here is, you know, the previous administration, the Muhammad General Muhammad Buhari's administration, is an administration that I sit everywhere and say it's an administration that was ready to ungovern but were never ready to govern. And that's why we've seen a lot of things. I'll give you an instance on the aviation sector. We went to rent a plane and bring it uh. down, to, brought it down to Nigeria and say, okay, Nigerian Airways. And it's lasted for some time before it was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was taken, you know, just to, because, you know, everything happened and nothing happened. Everything will happen in Nigeria and nothing will happen. So coming back to this administration, the main focus was immediately you come on board. I will give you an example with what is happening in, Se in Senegal. The day they said they are contesting, they have just one week. One week. Because they, they were all coming out from prison. Yes. And then they will have one week. In that one week, while they are campaigning, they are having strategic conversation on who to be where and what to be where. Immediately he was sworn in as president. He young, already knew, young man. yes, he already knew his prime minister and all his ministers. That very day, he appointed them and they had their first executive council meeting. Maybe you and guess a, what? It's a small country. There, uh, there is nothing country, about country. small. <laughs> there is nothing about small. The small issue is you understand the country, whatever. If today you, they said you are the manager of this place, right? Before you become before you will be sworn in, you know that there is this year, there is this year, there is this year. I'm going to change this year. I'm going to change this year. I'm going to change this year. That is what we're talking about, right? And today, look at what the, the man is doing. While he is there making friends with the people around him, the prime minister is there with the ministers sleep, having sleepless nights, working for the country. So what we are saying today is you are not ready to work, move. I will give you an instance. We were told when Obasanjo appointed a lot of technocrats, he told them, go and use your brain that you have to work 
allow me handle the political side of your own work. So any political backlash that come, I will handle it. And that is why we have a blueprint. So what we are During, saying... Um, yes. Obasi. So what we are saying is, before you come on board to be a minister or something, or before the government all comes on board, what strategy do you have to address? This is an a issue of power, issue of subsidy, issue of everything. The president on his presidential inauguration speech said subsidy is gone. When you were saying subsidy is gone, don't you have strategy to run that subsidy to be gone? You know, power is a problem that all the president inherited. So is it that you did not do a strategy before coming in to know that when you were writing your what, manifesto, right? When you were writing your manifesto, you did not do a strategy on how to tackle the issue of power. You know, there are a lot of things. And another thing, right? The legitimacy of the people we have in that system is also something else that we need to really look at. I'm not a Christian, but I will tell you, if we can adopt electing leaders like what um, is being done during marriages in Catholic churches, I will be very happy. Where they will place, they will place your pictures and say, or, 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 or come and say, if you have anything against this person, say it or forever keep quiet. I think we need to do that. Today, we wake up with the news that a, a, a sitting minister sending a letter to, to head of service, I mean, what do you call it, Versus saying harassment. there is an issue of sexual harassment by a permanent secretary. Of yeah. course, he Be has it, also fired back, saying that um, the, that lady was actually a political appointee. So that means the, the and case she is wanted there. to overreach her boundaries, to have access to financial so, matters so, and all so, that. So in, Mala Amza, the thing the is, something is there. Automatically, the legitimacy of that thing, you know, is there, right? So what I am saying in a nutshell, right, before coming on board on something, right, you know what you are going to go and meet. For every day during the campaign, people keep saying, this is what Buhari could have done, and he did not do it. And you said you are coming to take from where Buhari stopped so that you can continue and amend all the issues of Buhari. Then what are we seeing now? Do you know what we are doing now? No. Blame games. Because we don't have what to go with. So when we say trial and error, including our dollar, the issue of dollar in this country is based on trial and error. Tomorrow the dollar can skyrocket. 